going on, everybody? And welcome back to a very special episode of What's That? What's That? <laughs> oh, yeah. My name is Nick the Clown Viking. And this is my father, Ruben the Toy Man. Hi, guys. Welcome back. This is a show where we dive into some pop culture items, give a little bit of history, then give you a close-up on everything. Indulge with us as we focus in on some pretty interesting little pieces that we have to share with you. Tonight's topic is Batman. <laughs> Batman! That's right. The world's greatest detective, possibly DC's most incredible superhero of all time. Many people argue that Batman is the number one superhero, even though he does not have superpowers. They say that he could take down the entire Justice League on his own, which has been proven, and that if he was put up against anybody, he would come out victorious. Batman comes along with some wonderful gadgets, wonderful creativity, and some say he's the world's greatest detective. Well, yeah, he knows stuff. If you're new to our channel, hit the subscribe button, notification bells, because when we do post these videos each week, it'll keep you notified, it'll keep us right at the top of your list. Keep watching, and we'll keep showing. If you're wondering why I'm painted like a weird-looking clown, you can actually check that out in the last video we did, which is right up here. It's called, uh, I drove through the drive through like a clown, dressed like a clown. He did! <laughs> because I did lose a challenge, and if you want to see the whole thing and the experience and what their reactions were like, it's all right there for you. Oh, that was epic. Check it out. You guys will like it. Tonight, I'm Team Joker, and we've got Team Batman over here. I got a cape. How can I beat a cape? And I don't fly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That's right. We got stuff to share. We've got a lot of great items for you tonight, all Batman related, proving why Batman could quite possibly be the number one superhero of all time. It's going to be a pleasure to dive into this subject. Oh, yeah. Come on. It's a Batman show. Batman, you want to kick us off? All right. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go! Oh, nice, okay. This is a 2015 Toy Biz Icon DC Legends Batman. I found the Batmans. This is pretty cool. It's got some really nice detail, some really buff muscles. It's actually one of the most prominent utility belts that I've ever seen because it looks more like an actual like worker utility belt than Batman utility belt. Like, let's say, an uh, armed forces kind of utility belt? Yeah. It's an excellent rendition of Batman. It shows strength. It shows high quality detail. Toy Biz puts out a very nice piece and we were fortunate enough to not only acquire one, but unbox it and display it. So this is one of the different variations of the bat suit because typically you have the all black, but you do see right hanging up on the wall we do have different copies of the blue and gray with a little bit of black. That one has a black and yellow That's symbol right. on the chest. So there are many variations of the suit itself. Yes, Batman has evolved over time. Being introduced in the 1940s and even having 1940s TV series going on at the time. Black and white, wonderful little shows. Its evolution over time and its popularity has only grown as time has progressed. And if you do want to learn more about the classic TV episode, you can actually check that episode out up here as well. Because we did an episode called Top 6 classic TV items, uh -huh. and that one did feature a little bit of a signed something something from the classic TV episode. Oh, so you yeah. want to see that one too if you're a Bat fan. Oh yeah, you won't be disappointed. One of the many features I like about this suit is the cape, because mm -hmm. the cape is not only a cape, it's a weapon, it's defense, it's, it's the all-time greatest accessory. Yes. Depending on the particular Batman suit, sometimes the cape could be bulletproof. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it could be razor sharp. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it could be parachutable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. He can glide everything with it's it. It's all creativity and how you use it. 
all a tool. And that's the gadgets that Batman brings, a whole new dimension in fighting crime. And you mentioned strength before, and you just mentioned fighting crime. One of the many features of Batman is his martial arts. He was trained by Alfred. He was trained by Ra's al Ghul. Trained by a lot of the best. He has one of the most unmatched martial arts skills. Absolutely. He is trained in MMA. And I think he'd do pretty well in the UFC. <laughs> and that's why he's able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Bane. Of course, he's always the underdog. But somehow he manages to chalk up a victory. As strong and agile as he is, he also knows that it's brain over bronze. That's so right. he has contingency plans, different ways to take somebody down, and he always has a backup plan ready to go. Yeah, he takes the physical approach, he takes the mental approach, and then he takes the psychological approach, which is beyond mentality. Here we go. What's Batman without the Batcave? Oh yeah, what a nice piece. The Batcave. This is a 2014 Mattel Batman classic TV series Batcave. Includes Batcomputer and 15 accessories. It's pretty interesting. Who doesn't love accessories? Especially that when they're Batman related. And Batcave related. Especially in the classic TV episodes, the cartoons, you would see him go to the Batcave, he would go to the Bat computer, and he'd have all these different technologies programmed into it. That Bat computer can literally do anything, like you can put anything into it and it can solve it for you. This is part of a, a series of pieces put out in 2015, and this particular piece is very meticulous in the details that it has. It has the head from when Batman has to open up the sliding doors for him and Robin to go down the bat poles. It's there. There's a walkie-talkie. There's shock repellent. There's the bat -toozy. Or the bat -zooka. I'm sorry, we're the bat -toozy. That's right. <laughs> We got the bad doozy right there. Right. Oh, and you also have the bad phone. And the bad phone, the red phone for Commissioner Gordon. Yeah. It's a beautiful the piece. And then even has back here a little bit of artwork of the bat computer with the bat radar and a couple of other things. Actually, in the back, it says, keep off atomic pile, super high, high voltage. It's incredible graphics on it. It's a fabulous piece. I'm really happy you picked this one. Keep in mind, Batman came out in the 20s, and they had all of these technologies in the comics and the early TV shows of things that the Bat computer can do that normal computers weren't even thought of able to do at the time. Batman and the Batman comics were really ahead of their time. And the gadgets that they introduced, even the Batmobile, always had some features on it mm -hmm. that were unusual and state-of-the-art. What was one of your favorite things about the Batcave? My favorite part about the Batcave was the Batcave. <laughs> but it had a giant diamond. And that giant diamond was the power source to all the electronics. And the Batmobile was atom atomic powered, got charged up with that diamond. So the diamond. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, if you look here, the diamond would be elevated right above this. Oh, wow, okay. This has got shark repellent spray. It's got the different sprays here. When he was fighting the shark, Robin had to come down with the shark repellent spray, but he had it up there in the helicopter. <laughs> when they were in the bat boat in the movie, Robin would be shooting these electronic <laughs> magnetic pulses at the submarine that the penguin and the bad guys were in. Yeah. And so he was shooting it with electric magnetic pulses. And that was so an the, EMP the gun. gun? That's exactly what that is. Wow. An EMP gun. Wow. Ahead of their time. That's right. Oh, 60s. To the bat poles, with the push of a Shakespeare bust button, Bruce and Dick are transported into the vast bat cave and transformed into Batman and Robin. Housing the bat computer, the Batmobile, and a host of gadgets, the dynamic duo solves crimes and is always alert for trouble in Gotham City. Now it's time for Batman and Robin to teach the villains that crime doesn't pay. We're gonna get you.
Okay, so here we go. We're up to the next piece. So far, it's been fabulous. We really love this subject matter. Well, here we go. Ooh, we got a big box over here. Ooh, that one was kind of heavy. Ooh, did that say utility belt? You know, guys, I am a collector of belts. I have championship belts galore, and who wouldn't want Batman's utility belt? And here it is, live and in living color. Wow, we had mentioned about the utility belt in the past couple of items. I didn't think we we're actually going to have one here in the midst of our present. Here's the special part about introducing this piece is we're going to let it breathe. That's right, we're unboxing tonight. Unboxing! Yay! <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Let's do it. Is that a box inside of a box? Oh. Ooh, okay, I think that box. So we break it down one box. We have a very nicely displayed and beautifully graphic ties. We have outline of Gotham City, the classic TV series Batman. And over here also says includes a batarang. Ooh. Ah, yeah, now we are getting serious. Ta-da! Oh, that's actually pretty sick. It's magic right before your very eyes. Criminals beware. When the occasion calls for handcuffs or even chicken noodle soup, the undeniably uber fashionable utility belt is fully stocked and ready to go. It's unclear as to how many crime-fighting components fit into the bountiful belt. But... It has been known to cleverly carry a skeleton key, smoke pellets, and anti-toxin pills. It even holds a dehydrated bat suit for when crime simply cannot wait for a trip to the bat cave. Holy moly, that's some serious belt issues going on there. How do you make a dehydrated bat suit? I don't know, but I guess you gotta add water. <laughs> <laughs> this is nice. Very highly detailed. Yeah, it's the actual bat belt. And, a, and an actual batarang. Yeah, look at that. Oh, yeah, the batarang. Yo, we're going full send all the way out the box. Full on utility belt. Oh, wait, we gotta crown you the champion for winning the last challenge. Ladies and gentlemen, crowning you the bat champ. Of what's that? That's right. Super Toy Man, Ruben. Ow! Oh, I'm the champion! There's a reason why I'm painted like a clown. It fits! You can see that they are actually working compartments. Ooh. You can actually open it up, put items in there. Even these round cylindrical ones open up. Yeah, those are supposed to be your medication tubes and... If you start looking at it, it's actually functional. This is legit. All right, all right. What was your favorite accessory on the utility belt? My favorite bat accessory was those exploding pellets. Yes. <laughs> I always like when they pop. I always wanted to find some. Yeah, me too. Fireworks, maybe. This obviously is the utility belt from the 1966 TV series starring Adam West and Burt Ward. It comes from the 2015 series, the same series that we mentioned in the earlier sharing of the Batcave. Yeah. They came out in, in, in spurts. Oh, this one's at 2013. Oh, okay. So Each year they released more items. Yeah, so this was a, a collection over years as far as release goals. Yeah. As opposed to it all being released together. Yeah, yeah, so that makes everything a little bit more harder to get because it's a limited run. It's like the one item comes out and... Whether people get it at the time or not, then they miss the opportunity to complete the set. That's right. So you really had to be committed to put together a nice set when it came to this particular series of Batman products. I love how that belt had anything, regardless of the size. He can pull something out that wouldn't even fit on his person. <laughs> that belt. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it was campy. He used to be able to reach behind his cape there, and then all of a sudden he had like a, a bazooka. How's that happen? <laughs> 
or a, a, a shield that was like bulletproof <laughs> that he unfolded and him and Robin hid behind, right? What the hell? The Batarang, absolutely beautiful, beautiful piece. Mm -hmm. It is the exact replica of what he had on his show. And it's even much better that we have it. And the Batarang itself, there were different variations of them. There were just regular Batarangs that he would throw that were like knives. But then there were remote control ones and just all different kinds of technology. He would have rope tied to this end and he would throw it up and then climb the walls. Depending on his specific situation, that string was either there or not there <laughs> magically. It do. That's what made him Batman. <laughs> Quite a weapon. So I think I'll bring some friends to help me out with this next item. Oh, wow. Okay. Once again, we dip back uh -oh. into the classic TV series. But this time it's because it features Batgirl and Robin, in addition to Batman. These are the six inch figures that came out with that same Mattel toy series. The question is, what year did these come out? Let's make a guess. I would say 2014. I'm going to say 2015, because okay. I don't think I've seen that year yet. Okay. Do you want to make it? Interesting. <laughs> we want to bet on this one. Sounds like a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't planning on this. We were not. All of a sudden, it's on. Let me take another step back to that 2014 before I commit it as my final answer. I'm going to stick with 2015. Okay. I'm going to go with 2016. How about Loser Gets Pied? Oh, boy. Okay. Sounds like a... Sounds like a challenge. Because <laughs> I mean, what clown doesn't want to pie somebody? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and who doesn't want to get pied? Just do it! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so let's see. We're both wrong. It's 2014. Oh, wow! Wasn't I going that way first? I would say 2014. <laughs> you did, you went 2014. See that? Yeah, you second guessed me. <laughs> You did a mental trick on me. Uh, if I didn't mention the competition, he would have been right. You gotta stick with your gut sometimes. Yeah. Nonetheless, I lose. But this beautiful piece does capture the essence of Adam West, Burt <laughs> Ward, and Yvonne Craig, who played Batgirl, and of course, you know, Batman and Robin. But this piece is special because it has those three figures, and Batgirl came in in the fifth or sixth season of Batman to introduce a girl hero for the girl population out there at the time. And she was a big hit. Who didn't like when you would see her Batgirl cycle pop up on screen knowing that she's going to be featured in this week's episode? She brought her ballet skills into the character. It was a great addition to the dynamic duel. All of a sudden, they became that dynamic trio. Even beyond the classic TV series, you had Batgirl, you had Robin, and then the original Robin eventually grew up to become Nightwing. So you had Batman, Batgirl, Robin, and Nightwing as part of the Bat family. There were a few different comics, a few different movies that featured all four of them together. And even a point in time where Batman went missing, mm -hmm. and the three of them had to take over. And this special six inch series of action figures. Another first because most action figures are four or eight. Oh, interesting. Ooh, this has really cool graphics on the back. It has Batman and Robin in the Batmobile and Batgirl on her bat cycle. Fabulous. It says, what's the one thing Batman won't find in his utility belt? Well, according to Batgirl, it's a woman's intuition. And this heroine has plenty of it. Sporting her own gadgets. <laughs> and speedy purple bat cycle. Batgirl has saved the day and the lives of the crime fighters Batman and Robin on many occasions. And they return the favor. Not that the Cape Crusaders can't fight their own battles. But without Batgirl, they could have been turned into human tea bags by the Penguin. Holy show ups, Batgirl. This dynamic duo is now a titanic trio. I think it was Batman Forever, Batman, Robin, and Batgirl all featured in that movie. A lot of people didn't like it. They said it was a flop of the Batman movies. I thought it was kind of cool back in the day because it was the first time it was really featuring the 
rest of the team. But they introduce a lot of characters in that um, with the Riddler, Mr. Freeze, and Two Face. Know, Two Face, right? So they had a variety of characters get introduced in that movie. Who would you guys like to see portray the Riddler nowadays? Who's a good Riddler? Who? Who? <laughs> who? who? <laughs> Holy Return from Oblivion, Batman. <laughs> Remember, it was a campy show. Yeah. It's interesting that it has that verbiage on there that goes right in alignment with the campiness of the show. And just like that, <laughs> this toy line revived the whole series. Batman's cool again. Oh, yeah. What I liked about the show it was very colorful. It really exaggerated the colors in the show. And that made it that much more entertaining. Especially once it converted from black and white to being in color, it was a huge deal that it had to pop because now colors were a thing and you wanted to have the brightest ones. And they did. And they got noticed. I guess we're ready for the next piece, huh? I believe it's the last piece. Okay, so let's dive in. Uh, there we go. We like to save our biggest and best items for last. And this is by far the biggest Batmobile I've seen. This particular Batmobile is from the same toy series. And the first one made for this six inch series of Batman toys. Let's see what year this one came out. Do we want to guess on this one? All right, Redemption. 2014. 2015. Oh, we're still close within a year. 2013. Oh. So, so once again, we're still both off. I said 2015? Yeah. I lost again. He won. Now I get two pies. One for each eye. All right, so settled. He's getting pied tonight. As it was my fate. It's a really nice plastic Batmobile put out by Mattel. It's a very nice piece and something special about this piece. And the only way to share that with you is to actually reveal it. So let's go ahead and we'll box this. So let's go ahead and bring them back out. Wow. It's a beautiful Batmobile. It is a 1966 TV series Batmobile. Sitting in the car is both Batman and his arch enemy and secret love, Catwoman. As much as they were enemies through the different DC series and comic books. Bruce Wayne and Selena Kyle grew up together. Mm -hmm. So they were close friends before they became Batman and Catwoman. But as much as they're enemies, they're also good friends. We have Batman and Catwoman going out for a date, holding hands. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that makes this one extra special is Julie Newmar, the Catwoman of Catwomen, signed this particular piece for us. Everything on this is fully plastic, even down to the wheels. And if it was metal, that would be heavy. It is a limited edition series of these Batman TV series pieces. This particular Batmobile has the Bat phone added characters of Batman and Catwoman. Ooh, they're actually seat belted in, which is pretty cool. Yeah, safety first. Oh, that's legit. So there aren't a bunch of other accessories on this Batmobile like there are in different models. That's right. But it's cool that they do capture the bad phone in that because that is an essential to the Batmobile. Yeah. They do have outlines for the hood and the trunk, but neither of them do open, nor do the doors open. So it is very limited in uh, capacity as far as what it can do. But it is very cool that it does house the six inch figures. Back in the day, certain cars wouldn't always fit figures. So it's nice that the entire line is compatible together. There's also a couple of extra added features here. So on the one side, you do make the Batmobile when you put them together. On the one card, you have uh -huh. Batman and Robin on the back side. Very nice. And the other card? Oh, Batman and Catwoman. Interesting. Doesn't get any better than that. Three different Catwomen back in the 60s were Julie Newmar, Lee Merriweather, at the kit. Lee Merriweather was fortunate enough to get in the movie because Julie Newmar was busy on a production off the main island. And so Lee Merriweather did the movie. Eartha Kitt came in and did the TV series for a season until Julie Newmar can come back and reclaim her throne as top cat woman of the Batman TV series. Huh. 
Who knew? Who was the top Catwoman of all time? She's my favorite. Oh, it smokes! What you're about to see right now is filming of The Punishment, the episode about whether Batman is truly DC's top superhero of all time, where we did have a little bit of a bet which resulted in the loser getting pied. And here we are, and I like to re-emphasize, <laughs> losers get licks. <laughs> and I got a lot of licks in today! <laughs> The Viking Peister. I think that makes an adequate looking pie. That's basically the rest of the whipped cream that was there. Oh man. Here we go. Time to cash in. <laughs> <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Okay. Damn, Foggy. <laughs> we went through our entire classic TV series line of toys for the Batman collection. We actually did unknowingly and <laughs> the fabulous pieces. So whether you're a Batman fan or you're a fan of another character of DC, let us know who you think tops Batman and would take the rank as the top DC character of all time. Yes, Batman is an excellent role model, a serious detective, and a creative character with no superpowers, but still is talked about today. This episode right here is the last episode we did. This is a video that YouTube thinks is best for you. And in the middle is the subscription button, so do make sure you hit that for us. We'll catch you same bat time, same bat channel, same bat place. We'll be there! Will you? Come on! We'll catch you next time. <laughs>